I got to see 30. I'm going to call it meeting the order. With that, we'll ask the commissioner to have the off and he will return our invitation. <laughs> I forgot which one he wants to get on the thing for this table. I'll tell you, maybe they don't see it again. We won't see it again, I'll tell you. Plus, we've been still meeting, I'll tell you. Whenever you'll be, somebody says something, I'll tell you. So they have to count, I'll tell you. Let's hear the mission in here, I'll tell you. Let's hear the question. Let me make sure that we're going to have a good meeting. Let's make sure that we're going to be considered by the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For the recite the South City Mission Statement, to advance a framework for our success to balance government, dynamic partnership, and engage community. And Mr. Boone, if you would, you read the video today. Solid City is a safe, prosperous, and vibrant community where diversity, innovation, and education drive success in a globally competitive society. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, let's to the agenda. Uh, Mayor, minutes for uh, 3.1 under consent has been slightly amended. As well as uh, amending on 3.3, changing the uh, resolution to the bank account as uh, officers for taking uh, their own debt. Other than that, no other amendments to the agenda. Okay, now it's on, it's on the table tonight. Yes, right. sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make a motion that we approve the adjustments to the agenda as presented. Right. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, like sign. So the agenda is good. I'll further make a motion to approve the Senate agenda. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, like sign. Motion here. Before we go any farther, if you have some electronic devices, if you would please silence so those, please. If you would. All right, thank you. All right, let me ask it. Send it in. And then we'll comment. Public comment. Okay. All right, so the comment. We have one Cindy Dameron. All right, Mrs. Dameron, you come up and state your name and address, please. Cindy Dameron, 11080 U.S. Highway 64 West, to the Father City, North Carolina, 2734. Um, my concern tonight is um, I'm getting really frustrated as a real estate agent and working to bring in business just as hard as you guys are. And I am getting contact. I need to know. And so does every other agent and anybody coming to Siler. Uh, what the process is, um, a hardcore process. I'm getting all sorts of the counties over this, state, the, the town is over that. Permitting is getting confusing. Road closings are getting confusing. The no notifications on them. Um, and I just found out tonight that if your water wasn't, uh, if you did not have an account uh, in 22, that your water cannot be reestablished and you were not given, you couldn't reopen your business or that building is of no use anymore because they're, they have lost their allotment. And as far as I know, businesses and homes are not being notified. Um, so we're going to have even more buildings that have, and I don't know now if you have had a business and you haven't, and you haven't been using it, it's been a vacant building, how long you're allowed to be vacant before um, you lose that right 
again. So I've got several properties that are listed and to find out tonight that now I can't get my water and sewer reestablished in those businesses and they are on the market. And what's that gonna do for our business and bring up these people in, both residential and sewer. And then I need to know or would like to know if you do have a development and it is approved, how are we going to issue the permit? Is it first come, first serve? How do we get on a docket? How do we get? We just need some guidance, some direction, and some organization to the development. It's very frustrating. It's hard to sell when the buyer and the agent and the seller can't get a hardcore step-by-step -step process in getting a piece of property. You know, and you guys can rezone all night long, but how do we know who's going to be the next one in line to get these the office? And when are they coming on? I was told today, June 2025, I applied for my, that that's going to start me to. First I heard of them. So, and that was given to me by the council. So I think we're going to start doing that. Do I believe them? Do I believe the town? How do I do? I just want some, I want some guidance. I want something that I can say and tell a developer, tell an investor, and not to have egg on my face a couple of weeks later. When they talk to you when it's done. Okay. Yes. That's all at a time. Um, okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Remember, ready to open the public hearing R23 0602 additional rezoning to the village of Black. Open public hearing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Sitting in this is case R23-0602 for Village Lake Drive. The applicant, the owner for the pro of the property is Rudar Cyber City LLC. The applicant is Courtney McQueen of Quitney Engineering Incorporated. The request is for a conditional rezoning of five blocks from office institutional conditional to neighborhood business conditional. Um, the properties are located off of Village Lake Drive, Tyler City Business Drive, and 100 Village Lake Drive. The total acreage for parcels are 10.81. Planning board did recommend approval of this reason. As you can see from the subject property map, the subject properties are located to the west of 2nd Avenue, south of Old U.S. 421, and along Tyler Business and Village Lake Drive. The zoning map shows that the properties to the north and to the south are currently zoned as public institutional conditional and to the west is light industrial where Dominion Power, where Dominion Power Station is located. To the north is a nursing home and to the south is a business park. The land use map plan recommends that this, develop, this area be developed as mixed use. Mixed use is defined as areas often near major streets and highways and best served um, best used for commercial uses, public facilities, and residential use. Uh, 
as you can see, the public properties are undeveloped and cleared. They were initially rezoned um, ONI conditional in association with business parks and nursing homes, um, but have never been developed. Um, the, the business park area um, has trouble keeping um, residents, so they never did extend the business development to this area. Your option for tonight is to approve um, the rezoning to B1 conditional as a, as presented and find the rezoning as consistent with the surrounding area and the side of the city land development plan or deny the map amendment and find the rezoning as inconsistent with the surrounding area and the side of the city land development plan. That says presentation. Um, I believe we have a couple of people signed up to speak um, on this item. Are there any questions for staff? Um, in, in your planning, uh, in your planning board meeting, when you're meeting with the applicants before you, were they made aware that it could be a right good little while before they could ever start construction? Yes. Due to uh, waste water. Yes. Plan. That was explained or discussed. Um, prior to them using some Yeah, because it could be a considerable time. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Uh, we have one person signed up to speak, Jennifer. Oh, okay. I did recognize the name. You give your name and address, please. I'm Jennifer Scott. I am at 244 on Ridge Lane, I practice law here out for a long time, and I represent uh, the applicant. I think this is pretty straightforward. Um, I've got our engineering folks here on the team, so you can see the answer questions if you have them. Um, but in our view, this project sort of meets with your uh, land use plan, your projections for growth here. We do understand um, the utility concerns. Um, this property is it does have sewer and water available to it when that capacity becomes available, and, and my client is fully surprised on that. Um, but for now, I think this uh, little apartment project gives you um, some diversity of housing to uh, sort of start the growth that we expect here, and um, it's a pretty straightforward project. So, uh, you know, I'll go. You may or may not get there, but we're happy to get you back. I'm looking here, uh, and maybe it's too soon in the process. These units are pretty much out there on the highway, but you get seen coming down the road. I just need to glean that out of the um, so I don't think the, the design um, has fully been fleshed out at this point. There will be um, a, a difference of offering one, two, and three bed right, units. Right. So I imagine they will go up, but it's not going to come I don't anticipate coming back asking for any sort of variance or other conditional use per the ordinance for the apartments themselves. I guess. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Any kind of questions from the planning for me? Right? But the hearing is down closed. Uh, what is the mission of the board? Well, I'll make a motion to approve the zoning map amendment from OIC to B1C. I find the amendment to be consistent with the town of Sol Solar City's mutual land use plan based on the staff report supporting exhibits, consistency statement, and testimony provided. I also find the amendment is reasonable in harmony with the surrounding area. Sir. All right. We have a motion. We have a second. We need a motion to board. Any questions? And now we we'll move on to the vote. All those in favor say aye. Or all those opposed by sign. That motion period. All right. At this point, we're going to the next vote again. 
What is the total period R twenty three that O seven O one is on its own the most free church road? Yes, this is a um, rezoning for R twenty three dash zero seven dash. I'm sorry, zero seven zero one for Love Street Church Development. The owners of the property are Judy Coble, Brady Ray, and Judy Coble, um, Carol Reed, and Deborah Tilson, and Boyd D. Randler. The applicant is Windsor Development Group. For LLC. The rezoning is a request to rezone eight parcels from agricultural residential and residential six to residential three conditional. The two um, <coughs> are located as two unaddressed parcels on Love Street Church Road, 411 Love Street Church Road, and five unaddressed parcels on Woody Lane. The acreage is totaling 89.67 acres. The subject properties are located west of Love Street Church Road at US 421, east of Richardson Street and Woody Lane, and north of Highway US 64. The zoning map shows that this area is currently zoned as agricultural residential with a small portion of residential. Residential city only district located along um, Love Street Church Road. To the south of Long Highway 64 is mainly um, AR and some um, highly commercial zoning. The land use map um, suggests that this area of the zone um, be developed as mixed use. Um, medium density and medium density residential, as well as conservation, rather than conservation and recreation. The conservation and recreation area is located along Lowe's Creek Church Road, um, Lowe's Creek. As you can see from the provided site plan map, um, the development will be done in four phases with a total of 562 units. 169 will be single family residential, 81 will be townhome, and with 312 apartments. There will also be open area and trails, as well as storm, um, storm, storm water measurements installed on the development. The properties are currently undeveloped. Um, road, the roadways will need to be improved. So Love Street Church Road will have to be improved, as well as Woody Lane. Woody Lane is an unimproved um, private drive, so that would have to be improved. A floodplain development permit would also be required for this development. To the south are mobile homes and a heavily wooded area is located to the west of the site. Your options tonight are to approve the map amendment to R3 conditional as presented and find the rezoning as consistent with the surrounding area and the side of city land development plan or deny the map amendment as presented and find the rezoning is not consistent with the surrounding area and the land development plan. That staff's presentation. I believe you have some people signed up to speak, but are there any questions of staff? Just want to make sure I got, I got you right. You did say the stormwater control program for the UDO is in place. That's all you want. That would have to um, that would have to be worked out during the design um, the site development phase, but we did do um, a preliminary. Submittal to the um, engineer for the University of the <clears throat> City. And he stated that he would need more detail in terms of figuring out what their stormwater needs, needs would be and um, if they're in compliance. But it would comply with Yes, it would. Have, yes, it would okay. have to. The mobile home uh, part there. Is that going to stay or is there got plans to renovate that? That would have to be a question to ask the applicants 
Um, they did include that area in their development plan. So that would have to be something that they would, they would have to confirm that they're going to, you know, remove or relocate um, some kind of way. I asked the same question we did the other. Um, they were made aware it would be a long time before they could ever shovel any dirt for that thing. Yes, that was discussed in several pre development meetings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the second thing, too, and I, I, I noticed this in the agreement that uh, the road that comes out in the secret forward. I saw that there are plans to make that road on the right turn. That's correct. But the, 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 the road that comes out by the super, 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 the get the super, 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 the try to go left, it's like running the dog up through there. So I reckon my question is if this if this project gets off the ground before we get to super street, will there still be the no right term? There had to be a meeting or something built there so you can't do it that still is that still available or is that a question for that? That would be a question for the applicant as well. Um I know they have they're in the process of working with DOT on their traffic impact analysis. So there's still conversation going on with DOT, and I'm not sure how far they have progressed with that. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I believe it's in the same vein you have, but I guess we'll ask for the first speech. I guess we'll ask the first one okay. because it's in the same vein we talked about. Okay. All right. All right, we'll move on. Our first speaker, and of course, just like before, come up and give us your name and address so we can record the first one up, Lonnie West. What I do for Randall to go first. Okay. That'll be fine. Mr. Lee Land. That's me. Okay. Thank you, Good evening. My name is Lee Lambert. I live at 51 Paulwood in Chatham Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Um, I have a good connection to Fowler City. My stepdaughter will graduate from the School of Science and Math. The School of Science and Engineering that just changed its name. Um, I don't know the name yet, but she'll get the old name because she is entering into her senior year. At the school, along with her two year degree at Chatham County Community College. This morning, I looked at a number of homes that are for sale in Tower City. And there are 11. That is a 20% up an increase from last week, and there were nine. You have done an extremely good job of bringing in uh, full speed alone, 20 plus houses. What we are trying to do on Love Creek Church Road is build a workforce in housing so that everybody that works at Will Speed can get paid by Will Speed. And everybody that works at Toyota and gets paid by Toyota will be able to come there and find a place to live. We have done a wetland study, we have done an archaeological study, we have done a historical preservation study, we have done an endangered species study. We have found nothing that indicated that we should do anything other than go forward. We have done a traffic study, not only with um, working with the planning department, but we have our engineers looking at the traffic study, the town's engineers looking at the traffic study, and DOT is looking at the traffic study. And we will be complying with anything and everything. Is there is an existing right of way in Love Creek Church Road, and we will be having to make Love Creek Church Road a wider road, but it will fit within the within the right of way that is already there, and we will not be taking anything constantly by it. As far as the right turn in and right turn out, we'll be glad to work. We have our engineer here, our traffic engineer, and, uh, and Craig Durr, another engineer, all of whom can speak more than I can about traffic. So, um, we had a neighborhood meeting. Uh, everything went very well at the neighborhood meeting. 
I have promised to name either two roads, two paths, two something, and for two grandfathers that were connected to the link. One of them is Mr. Platt, and his daughter, granddaughter is right there. And the other is Mr. Jackson. And we'll be turning in those names to honor the people that had it land in the farm in many years. One of the questions was about the mobile home park. Uh, Stephen Coble and his father and sister owned that land and it had the mobile home park there a long time. He is very interested and very concerned about his people that live there. And it's not just a business to him. He knows those folks. Most of them have lived there a long time. He requested six months uh, notice so that he could give them plenty of time for him to pick up the trailers and relocate them to another place and charge them the same rent that they are paying now. And that is really I cannot guarantee that will happen. But that is what Stephen has told me the entire time. And that's what I know he intends to do. When I make you a promise, I know I can keep the promise. The only thing I can tell you is that that is the intention of the gentleman that owns the land today. And we did include into our contract that we would do six months of notice so that there would be plenty of time to make sure those people have a good place to go. What questions do we have? Well, I have a road question, but I don't, I don't think there's one. I'm not the smart one. Yes, sir. Road engineers. Road 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 engineers up here. Road engineer. up here. Yeah. They're coming up. They're, they're on here. Okay. All right. Any other questions? And uh, I think I'm going to tell you Can you tell me what you define as work for Right now, we know what the given salaries are supposed to be at Wolf Speed and what they are at um, Toyota. Based on those salaries today, we would be able to build homes that those people could afford. Some for rent, because we're trying to build apartments, and some for sale. But we would have something that would fit that whole range. These are not inexpensive houses or affordable homes. And they are certainly not going to be expensive ones. This is not a this is not going to be a country club neighborhood. This is workforce. And our goal completely is to be, and it makes sense. You think about it, there's 1,800 jobs this way, and there's 2,200 jobs this way. Those, those are that's that's our market. And so what we are aiming for is homes that cost for them. What will happen in the next two years while we wait for sewer? I don't know. But that is our goal. If we could start today, we could do that today. And that is our goal. Thank you. What is the people involved? What about the elder people there? The vote for them the day hop. What did they hop? For the who? That was it. You're talking about in the tractor? Yeah. Um, what they want, to, what Stephen wants to do is is for each trailer that is there is to move it, which is why I put six, we put together, me and Stephen, we sat down and talked about how can he take care of his people? What can I do to help him take care of his people? And he called them his people. He didn't say my trailers. He called them his people because he said he'd known them for so long and they've been such good folks. He wants to move the trailers to a location that will allow them to continue to rent. You know, Beyond that, I, I don't know if I can't answer. But I've done everything I can to try to assist what he wants to do and to do the right thing with those things. Yeah, great idea. Yeah. Um, I know you were saying your, your, your goal is to meet the needs of, of the people who were in the university or uh, with the Toyota plan. Um, when you think about teacher salaries and things like, you know, like that, where would that fit into all of that? Because, you know, you have new teachers starting out and they don't have a lot of They don't. They should. They should. They should. They should. They they should. <laughs> yeah, but they don't. One of the things I've learned, um, when I talk to people, um, over the years, I've done a lot of volunteering and different things. I um, I started volunteering how to, to take food. And so 
started with the home shelf, and I take food. Then I started this team called Project 5000 and ended up doing over 10,000 meals to people that need food. Right now, I don't do a lot of volunteering. I was up until two weeks ago, I was taking care of my cousin who has special needs in the hospital, and my mother. I see her four days a week who's in a nursing home with Alzheimer's very advanced. So I can't be everything to everybody. I love those turtles that happen out at the beach, but I can't volunteer to say them. I don't know that I can do everything for everyone, but here's what I can do. It is important to us that we not just come here and build here, but that we are we will become citizens here and building citizens of Salvage City. And so one of the things that I included, and so Mark Cream is here, he's the president of Winter Palms. When we started talking way back, now I've been working on this project for a year, way back, I told him one of my concerns is affordable health. And I think that's important. And I can't be everything to everybody. But negotiated in my contract with Mark Cream is, and Anna is here from Habitat for Humanity. She'd like to speak with me at that time. We're going to donate $100,000 to Habitat for Humanity as soon as the first house gets the seal. And that's one of the ways we think we can be a good citizen of Siler City as well as building. Just one of the parties the title for June. But I don't have that today. We just know what the salaries are and what we're trying to do with working with them. It's going to depend on I me. Mean, so right now we know in the interest rates and what we want to build, we know what can buy there. I don't know, I don't know that I've done the math in my head exactly what that would be, but we do know what we're aiming for is to meet those two markets. No matter what number I do, that number is going to be up or down in two years based on interest rates, based on quality of lumber, based on things that I can't control. So right now we know we can meet those needs and that's what we hope to do, but that's where our market is, but I don't feel my hospitals, no sir. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right, Lonnie, you'll be next. Take your name and yeah. My name is Lonnie West, and uh, my current address is 133 Chatham Mill Road in Pittsburgh. But for the first 10 years that I lived here, it was a Connor City address, uh, 1448 Bowers Shore Road. And uh, I still feel like I'm a citizen of Cyber City. Because I still bank here, I still shop here, and uh, I feel at home here. When I moved in uh, Bowers Shore Road, my neighbors all came by to welcome me. I built a house there, and uh, they would stop by saying, I'm going to town. Get you know, anything I can bring back for you. So that impressed me that they called Cider City town. But if they needed to go the other way, they didn't say I'm going to Pittsburgh. They said, I've got to go to the sheriff's office. I've got to go to the tax office. And that's where they, they never mentioned the town. And so to me, growing up in the country, a country town like Tyler City, I feel so at home here. I worked for Chatham County for uh, a few years. I was the executive director of the Council on Asia. And during my tenure there, I built the senior center here in the business park in Tyler City. Then I uh, retired from there and uh, activated my real estate license. I'm now a real estate broker and uh, top producer at Chatham Homes Realty. I started a real estate career here in Salter City and I sold a lot of homes in uh, Ottoman States and uh, in Mortgage Hill and uh, over in Harmony Hills. I was the only site uh, uh, representative there selling the new homes in Harmony Hill. So I served for what four terms with Mayor Price on the Affordable Housing Board. Uh, and always I was looking for a way to build and 
find someone to build affordable housing, workforce housing. And uh, I was one who put together uh, what six of these parcels that we're talking about tonight. And all the people that I contacted uh, owned the land, they had inherited the land, but they no longer lived in Sutter City, either in Greensboro or Julian or Liberty. And uh, they, we put them together with some others, with Steve Cole, and uh, that's the project we're talking about now. With the understanding, and we have been great, and just folks, that's what they want to do, build affordable workforce housing. And not just for uh, the people who might come to work here, but what about people that already live in Sauter City? Some of the homes that people that I told before in Autumn Estates, what if they want to move up and get a more modern home or a larger home than where they live? As you know, mostly the homes in Autumn Estates are uh, double whites. And if somebody wants to move up, and they will be available for them as well. And uh, for teachers and policemen and other people who work in this insider city as well, we're not going to block anyone out. It's uh, going to be available for the other city. But that's what I want to see about my new hometown. I've lived in China County now for 20 years. That's the longest I ever lived anywhere. I've uh, lived all over the world and all over the United States, serving in the military and working for the state of Nevada uh, and I've owned homes in seven different states. But this is home to me and uh, I am just happy to see something happening in my hometown. The people that own this property that uh, we're uh, looking to develop now, all of them are ecstatic, happy to see that their property that they inherited, parts of the old family farm, is what it would become uh, residences for Sauter City. And uh, that's uh, what we're looking to do. Any questions for Larry? Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, that's right. Well, fellow veteran, thank you for your service. Yeah. All right. Uh, Excellent, Liz. Great, you, you, it's good. Thank you. I'm terrible, man. I'm glad I got the wrong look at this. Scott, right? Yeah. Yeah, your name and address, please. Uh, 403, Lane, North Carolina. I'm a consultant that's working with, with Lee and with Windsor to help shepherd this project in the process. Um, with me tonight is Bong, uh, along with uh, BHB, who's in our traffic study. So. I'll address kind of the this level of traffic, but if you guys want to dig into the weeds, he can be very specific. Um, first, I'll address the one question about the stormwater environmental. Um, we are going to preserve pretty much most of the environmental features on the site, the floodplains, the streams, the wetlands, uh, any impacts which are generally limited to a, a crossing, a creek required by the connectivity, will be done in accordance with um, both the state and federal statutes. Um, stormwater management will be in compliance. Um, we showed representative of our stormwater features are. Um, we think that they're, they're large enough to serve what we need to meet um, both nutrient and, and uh, retention requirements. Um, traffic study, we've submitted a traffic study. It's been reviewed by town's consultant, it's been reviewed by DOT. Uh, we've addressed the comments of both the consultant for the town as well as the UT congestion management made uh, and we submitted back to them for, for final sign off. Uh, none of our recommendation, recommendations changed from the time we prepared it um, to now. Uh, we will be uh, day one um, building the intersection of Well Creek Church Road and the US 64 as a right in, right out driveway. Basically, we're putting in a restricted court shop type movement. So day one, um, you'll be able to turn left into the site, but you will not be able to make it left out of the site again today for the exact reasons that we just talked about. Um, so that in, in behind the model of what that movement looks like when you go right and have to get to the next intersection turn around. Uh, and then, you know, 100 years from now, when DOT decides to make it a super street, that will just make it more restrictive in terms of the left building. 
but he's also an MLS guy. Uh, so uh, there's a lot more I could answer on the technical side of it, but I'll stop there and see if there's any specific questions I can help answer. And then if you want more details on the to today, Bob, more than well to get the weeds on this. I'm still waiting. Oh, they're waiting for the track. Yeah, I'm going to wait for the track. Not good enough. <laughs> You're all right. I'm going to take I'll bring up, I'll, I'll step down and let uh, my good friend behind the whole thing. You might get the great, you know, we don't got no. Okay. Yeah. Get ready for the real show. Uh, <laughs> don't make me nervous. <laughs> Can you say come up and state your name and address, please, sir? Uh, could you use my name is Paul Fung Wan. I'm a traveling from Europe. It's a rich vegan gentleman. My business address is 940. And I'm actually glad to be the Balkan of your So I graduated from NC State in 2005 and 2003, got a master's degree in 2005, get a PhD. And being practiced in traffic engineering since then, and doing a lot of traffic studies in the Triangle area in China County. Glad to be here. So, we have been working with uh, Winder and uh, Greg and the Lee and others in my first involvement as well for last year. And I was uh, attending a conference in Charlotte at the Holy Game. Talking to the project, like, what's going on over here, and we have a lot of people to bring over here. But if people do have a concern, we have to have it and want to want us to get involved and then start this year. And when they're getting involved in, and we are on, on the contract. And we work with the Tom and the thank you, Jennifer, and the providing all the inputs. And uh, we work with NTD, which is going through a spoken process in the meeting area of the stuff. Really, a, a fresh opinion, you know, regarding what potential impact you know going to be and where we should study. So we collect traffic data in May of this year, and then we did check study in June. We complete check study in June, and then the town uh, with uh, their consultant review check study for all the comments, DOT for all the comments, and the DOT comments basically concur with the, the TI recommendation. And the top comments, before I have comments, I'm great comments regarding how to refine the model. So we provided updated type analysis based on from you know what we recommended. So the basic is a back to the section that's in the near right up uh, you know, the, the left out from a lot of picture on to you at six four it is a you know uh traffic issue and it's not only you know people are waiting over there. You know the people with with long and what they do, they don't risk it. So that's a safety concern. So NCDOT recognizes the problem. They have a long term long term solution for your city for you know with widening all the media equipment, risk picking some left turn out from San Gabriel and providing the new term solution a lot of for hoping there's some in a bigger roadway widening requirement and then you will call a solution that long term. On the interim condition, and we already provided a new on the phase one, we propose to convert a lot of church into you know, a right out. Basically, you still keep your right in, and people still you know, go, go to the restaurant and left in, but uh, for the right out, we can propose a culture uh, basically in the, for the interim condition that uh, when traffic is still relatively high. When traffic you know, become heavier, and but before the two projects, or the two projects get completed, we we will propose adding right turn. Also, we are exploring options for the median treatment. Basically, you have the median right east of a block grid on C4, and we are thinking about you know, do we have enough room to extend the median and further, and why that can improve. Traffic uh, compliance and really significant safety. So all this with the uh, with the uh, recommendation, you know, a lot of create and support, and uh, also with the spectrum access. You know, we are glad to you know find uh, the all the sections in the track study meet uh, the DOT standard meet the standard. One question. Yeah, I live real close, and I'm not sure I picked it up. If you if 
this project get ready before the super tree, which is probably good. Yes. Uh, and you you got plans to put an only right turn in there no matter what the TOT. Right, if I heard that. Correct. That's the exact right. Okay. So we size three scenarios. Basically, if it's filled out in year at least one in 2025, yeah. that's a year term. That's probably, you know, can handle 90 some demand units. And then also the full bid out in 2027. And for DOT tip project, the timeline is starting construction in 2026, 2027. And it's going to take uh, at least three, four years for them to complete. So we did addition scenario called the KP year analysis that put us on the 2032. We analyzed, you know, all, you know, under 2025 foundation with this project without TIP, TIP project, and 2027 foundation, 2027 foundation with the entirety of this project and without TIP, and 2032. And we are, that's why we developed solution to meet the top standard needs and on all foundations. You get your project done before they do. Yes. So now that's right. You said you got to go down. You don't have to go west on the city patrol. And you're going to have to turn somewhere. Now, if you want to go east, yeah. if you get done before the DOT gets done, yeah. where is that turn and how is it going to do? Yeah, that, that's what the modeling is. Yeah, what is the modeling? That, that, that's exactly you know, when I was uh, doing that. I looked at you know the area map and I thought, okay, that is many jobs. It's probably that I'll do it was there. And, but then I made the side, I drew the drill and make right turn. I think my immediate response is there are multiple choices, but the closest one might be past the church and then make the turn onto the full line shopping center. And it's to come back out in the center way and make a make a left turn on the same line conditions. So to me, as that the most convenient, the safe to use the cross street. You have it so you can right out, right in, come back out on the traffic line. So that's safe the solution. And then that's when I assign the traffic, and then I try to make sure you know there's enough capacity. And the factory line. So we glad to find out, yes, there's a number that to handle all this extra you turn off. That's so, so yeah, so with the, along with that, but because that as, as I think anybody who comes to the shop the blue line knows you can get about four cars before the lane turns. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, what is the, are you suggesting the, the, the light change cycle? Or what were you, what were you suggesting? Because if you've got a lot, you got mm -hmm. you said 90, 90 trips coming out in a in a in the morning. Those ninety cars aren't all going to wolf speed. They you know, have, to your point, they may be going to you know the workforce house for um, Toyota. So yeah. they have to come back around, and then the lights there don't hold up long either. There are secondary units. You know, that that's a great question. That's why you know we have like a preferred solution. Mm -hmm. We want to analyze on the most conservative to make sure you know, there's enough capacity, there's a queue. You mentioned about you know what if the people can make it, or what if put that route into no one desired one. Everybody can take that route, and that uh, you know good route becomes bad. What is that going to happen? That will bring up you know. Um, to you turn out from C to four, you can usually turn you know, left on a single line condition or you know, without a turn, you know, you can turn out onto either by jungles or some other you know businesses, you can turn out from so that's with multiple so multiple alternatives for people to make that turn back. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Very cool. My question is uh, Richardson Road that comes out on Smoke Dam Road. Mm -hmm. Is there any thought of making a second entrance and exit? Yes. Is that a private road or do it? I don't know. Um, that's what actually we, when we talk with the DOT, they have, uh, they, they already, you know, kind of answer, you know, they're from uh, Richardson all the way to DOT Road and with the span. Mm -hmm. As a part of the DOT, but then HFDI is showing there's a, some kind of like a private own. I think it's still with DOT distance, but uh, they didn't provide exact answer. But we do have that uh, secondary connection, you know, in that on the way to. That would be a good option. Yeah, just to yeah. clarify that, that once we get above 100 
units. Yeah. We have to have the secondary access point per your ordinance and per the TIA. So he, his, his model does explain that. And we're working with the property owner to get that right away clarified and dedicated and support the idea. Absolutely. After 100 units, yeah. Okay. You need to have a secondary point of access. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People can get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other okay. than just 60. Yeah, that's all good for the farm. That's also our safety. And then the, the other thing, when, when um, you look at it and it comes out on um, Snow Camp Road, Snow Camp Road is not a wide road. That's and right. it is fully residential area. So what what is you looking at for that end of the, the secondary interest in the There are primary access along that Creek Church Road, and then once you connect that, that will take care of the majority of traffic. And then you do need to put in extra payment, probably, you know, extra payment debt as well to handle you know, the traffic quality input. But Snow Camp is secondary. So basically, I we didn't, you know, Oh, at that level, yeah, but NCDOT does have a table to show how many traffic you are at 24 hour a day. This road is only carry and how wide it needs to be and how much to that it needs to be. I think the minimum, the very, very minimum, the eight, 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 eight foot of all that. So that so is all good. I live off the snow camera. Is that is that some some right? Yeah. But once you are over a certain ADT threshold, as every daily traffic threshold, the algorithm. Algorithm is natural. We can do all you know, provide some information, you know, pay the shoulder, something like that. Yeah, we work on signal protocol. Oh, yes, that's a that's a good question. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mark Kirby. Mark Crane. Yeah. One. Probably. <laughs> Sorry. Now. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. You're Mark, right? I'm Mark. Yeah. Well, close enough. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Excuse me. We can take the name and add you. Okay. Mark Crane. I'm at two port connection place in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, I'm here representing Windsor. Um, if you haven't heard of Windsor, what we have is a triad based company. So we're your neighbors, we're your local, we're not coming from out of state. Um, so in regards to workforce housing and your questions on um, pricing, certainly two years out, it is hard to, to nail what. But I can tell you this we've got a wide range of products. A wide range of square footage. So that that tells you where you cover all the bases, so to speak. That's our new plan to the housing. So um, I don't know if Craig had mentioned Stimmel is the engineering group we're working with, and I think they're well respected in this area. So we got them as a strong partner to carry through the CDs. Um, we we would acknowledge the concern with utilities. Certainly, timeline is a little bit unknown, and I would echo public comment that kicked off. It would be helpful for us to know timeline associated with that and process associated with that, because we do have investors and, and you know principals who need certainty in the project. So, um, side issue I know, but you know definitely a concern, but an acknowledgement at the same time. We know it's a long time frame. We work with that. But we need to know when that time frame hits critical dates and releases. So it's pretty, so it's, uh, that's all I've got. Um, that's important. Hopefully, you guys speak and we'll be doing our best to provide a good product. Any questions? Thank you very much. Ryan, remember. I, I'm going to differ on part of those Windsor as well. Okay. And on two. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to write two. I'm going to write two. I don't know why. You say name and address, please. 
I mean, I'm going to my address at 215 Street in Harvard. Um, I am the development planning director for Chaz Habitat. Um, as Lee said, and I'll keep it brief because you've already shared this, but we were approached by Lee and then both of us here. There was a conversation about a portion building um, that would serve the sort of lower half of the, the lower part of the spectrum compared to their workforce housing offerings. Um, through those conversations, we have received a hundred thousand dollar pledge from Windsor, um, which we're excited to accept. Um, and that investment will be used to purchase the land um, for habitat to continue to build affordable housing. Um, I wanted to be here on behalf of Habitat tonight just to make sure that y'all are aware of that investment um, and throw our support behind a uh, development that is um, addressing housing, which is needed in, in a major way in Tyler City, workforce housing especially. Um, and we're thrilled to see that included investment in find affordable housing to help serve the teachers and um, you know people who are going to clean all the buildings. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Thank you. Any questions? I'll give you your time. And since you're the last speaker on the idea of me, as Bonnie would probably get on me if I didn't say this, that uh, there is a affordable housing program in Chatham County. I don't know if you're aware of it or stuff, but there is money out there. Uh, We'll take all the money that you that we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can give you money or not, well, we can give you a name, so that kind of there. I hate to all the details, but there, yes, if that's something you'd like to look at, some very worthwhile for our group, and uh, we'll be glad to pass that information. All right, thanks. Including that, there's a lot of money out there, and Right. What's the reason for the board? I'm right. Hang on a second. Um, before I, I think that the, no, the the motion I think as that stated here is incorrect because we're not moving from OIC to B1C. We're actually moving from AR uh, and R6 to um, yeah. We're 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 uh, rezoning AR and R6 to uh, R3 condition. Motion that yep. Okay. Make a motion to approve the proposed zone amendment from AR and R6 to R3C. Find the amendment to be consistent with the town of Solitude's future land development plan based on staff report, supporting the exhibits, the consistency statement, and testimony provided. Also, find the amendment is reasonable and in harmony with the surrounding area. Second, mm -hmm. we have a motion and have a second. Is there any discussion or questions at this point? Any none, we're going to to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, like sign, and the motion will carry. Okay. Oh, busy. Having new business. Yeah. I also have to change the uh, Well, I will have to change the uh, finance report. I have a date and I'll get it in. It's probably a date. Oh, in a minute. In a oh, minute. Oh, I see it. Well, man, this is the other. Yeah, the one's on the table. Yeah, I'm on the wrong page. Um, 
What page are you on in the packet, Mr. Austin? Oh, it's on page four or five. Yeah, yeah. 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 There were some um, that we had to, you have to put your hand up and you didn't vote at all. That counts as a yes. So. I don't, I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I don't remember. I mean, I know that that we we talked about after that meeting if you didn't put your hand up and I think one of you guys asked during the meeting if you if you didn't um you know that that counts as a yes vote on whatever the motion is um so I mean if if you guys all want um you know as the board want the um the minutes to change to reflect how you know Commissioner Austin felt like he voted then we're happy to do that but y'all would all have to agree to amend it. I'd rather, I'd rather have to reflect it appropriately. If it's not going to change that, I'm going to have to deal with it. It's more of a thing. But, yeah, what happens? And going forward, we have. Yeah, going we forward, have, uh, yeah, we're going to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, is that what it is? Yeah. Is that what That was registered for the thing. That okay, we registered for the I'll make a motion. I'll perform my motion. I make a motion that we. The uh, amend the July 17th, 2023 minutes to reflect a nay vote for Commissioner Halston on the on the proposed restructure of the finance budget department. Second. Got a motion to second. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, we move to a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, like sign. And that would be a me. Okay. All right. Where do we get to? Yeah, just a few things. I know everybody's trying to get out um, Just an informational note. Um, this with August being here, this was the first month that we had the increases reflected on utility bills. So if you get calls from, from a citizen questioning the accuracy of their bill, we're happy to work with them. It, it may be attributable to the increase that was the first. Increase in seven years. Uh, another note on that is the, the increase we budgeted at 1.7 million uh, is what well, that we generate an additional revenue, and all of that is an operation cost. Uh, none of this revenue is going towards the wolf speed project or any other project of any scale in the community. I know what that keeps being said, but we want to make sure the accurate information gets out there. Um, with some of the changes in the in the finance department, uh, we are completely staffed again in finance on the utility billing side as of today. Uh, we have been fully smart. We also had Cassie Boyce from Robert Hafford to start with us, filling in as the interim finance director for the department hire. So we're we're moving along with finance and making sure there's strides there. Um, um, discussed at the beginning of this uh, meeting about permitting. Uh, nothing's changed in Solid City about permitting process in the last few years. Um, and the building inspections are moved to the campus. the same process that it has been. Um, as far as not being able to reestablish old accounts, that is something not decided by Solid City. That's a condition of the board order that was imposed upon us. That's not a Solid City rule. That's something the state is expecting of us. Um, we also want to make sure that we're meeting the sewer obligations of the rule speed. Uh, we committed in our agreement with Jim to 1.17 billion gallons per day at their full build out. And we want to make sure that we have that obligation there. But while we're still working with them, what their sewer needs are going to be, that's what creates that fluidity and what the expectations are going to be in terms of the housing and what we can commit to. And so we have that hard number. We got to make sure that we're meeting our obligations. Um, and I also want to recognize some of the people here tonight. Uh, Chris McCann, 
uh, is here, uh, Bob Palmer, uh, Robert Howe, and then they have hired a senior uh, project manager, which is Terry McDaniel here, who's taking the lead here in Solid City. Um, great group of people to work with, and we're really excited to have them here uh, working alongside us. And well, one last thing, this is another the information in the community. Uh, it's unfortunate we were not able to meet the requirements for offering football purely in this fall. Um, but I did have some uh, numbers for y'all to show you what participation was like. Uh, play football, we got seven out of 20. Eight new tackles, 12 out of 25. 10 new tackles, six out of 25. 12 new tackles, seven out of 25. Surely six new cheer, six new cheer with seven out of 20. Eight new cheer, six out of 20. 10 new cheer, three out of 20. 12 new cheer, two out of 20. So we had around six or seven average out of 20 to 25 that we needed to put those programs on. Uh, the staff did the best we could to market and advertise these programs, but we just fell short. We participate in the league football with Alamance County, but we're not in a position to change the schedule or make any changes to extend it ourselves because we're a participant in the facilitating running program. Um, but in light of that, we want to make sure that we're working with the community as much as possible because football is important to our youth. So we're going to offer football camps um, this fall, free starts to the participants, and we're working alongside Coach Ryan Johnson, who's the head coach of the football uh, program at Jordan Matthews High School. Uh, so we want to make sure we're doing the best we can for our youth this fall. And then a couple of staff meetings, we technically hired for the last two recreation coordinator positions. Uh, we have one individual starting on Thursday, the 10th, and the the other individual starting on the 14th. So, as of the 14th, we'll be fully staffed at the Parks and Recreation. Well, maybe I missed it. Why do you think that they didn't sign up? I didn't know they did. Well, it's, it's a downward trend that you're seeing signing up for youth football in this whole area. My understanding, Randleman did not get enough participants to offer football this year either. Um, I had parents concerned about injuries and, and concussions, which are sort of legitimate concern. Uh, today, uh, I don't think there's any one reason. Uh, but what, what it wasn't attributable to is the vacancies in the panel staff. We went through the same marketing and recruitment effort that we have in the past, it just didn't work out this year. But by offering a free camp uh, put on by the high school, it gives those that are interested in participating an opportunity to do so, and it'll also help us gauge what the interest is in football going forward. So if it's something the community wants, we want to make sure we're providing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the turn. I know what the end is. Okay. You have anybody come in? Um, um, when did you call me today? And I haven't looked at this. Oakwood Cemetery. <laughs> I thought she said a globe was broke and missing. I haven't looked at it. I don't know if somebody's running for the post, but I don't know. Let's take a look at that. And you know, you're working with John Day on this water bill thing. Yes. Yeah. Somehow or another, we need to have some kind of I thought we were done. I did too. Well, you did too. So we, there, there have been several conversations that have already taken place. And we're also sent another letter addressing the concerns there. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and since we've been, uh, so this since it came up tonight, and two different people have said it, this, this whole thing, like Miss Downer and uh, mm -hmm. the folks you know about whatever it is, but it sounds like we need to have some kind of get together group, real group, or something like that. We're in that group and explaining some of this to them as a group for everybody to be on the same boat. I, I agree with you, uh, and you're a part of the group of the sewer allocation plan discussions that we're going to have on Commissioner Hayes and Commissioner Bailey and other, other folks. Um, I think we need to figure out and get on the same page with that group so that we know what that message is. Because the last thing we want to do is put out changing information or incorrect information. So I think we need to further with that group so we can get the right information. That's good. We need to do that. Well, we're meeting on the 21st. That's good. But at the same time, I think we need to hear and incorporate some of the realtors 
and just for the people that are doing it, it sounds like there's just confusion somewhere there. It's just some information that's not being disseminated. So put something together. How about that? That works. Yeah. 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 Well, I think we do need to do something. All right. Anything else? I'm enjoying the national one right now. This is this is a criticism. It's just I uh, hear people talking and talking. They just want to know why we didn't have food. I would let the chief speak on that. I'm not going to speak on food or anything like that. So <clears throat> the food was the point of origin for the previous national night out. And national night out is really about the engagement and, and learning what's going on in our town, as opposed to a food event. I realized that uh, the time period of National Night Out with the uh, family that is in attendance creates a need for something uh, during that time period. But this is the first National Night Out we've had almost four years. Yeah. So I could not anticipate uh, participation or attendance. So I felt that best that it took this thing off the campus here. You know, I think if the vendors there and can get the, the new storage board lined up for that, the next year we'll solicit. Uh, town vendors or food trucks to come, Good. but uh, I don't think the police department or the fire department is going to be responsible for a food service. No, I mean, I don't know that. that. Oh, yeah. no, but, uh, well, I know that Parks and Rec does have some uh, food vendors that are, are free suppliers that work at concession stand and come to other events. So I hope that uh, we'll be able to solicit some food vendors and food trucks uh, that will create an option for families in the yeah, I was just going to ask, is it ever going to go back into the communities itself? Or well, are, are we going to continue to do the, the one event? And also, I just had a concern about the publicity because it seemed like it was late getting out that it was happening. Two about the questions. Um, I feel like the static display at one central location best serves our community. The Delta South City uh, itself, uh, perhaps at, a, at another population point where the neighborhoods represent larger numbers of uh, a diverse community that I would support. Uh, to do the to uh, previous years. Uh, prior to COVID 19, we had with the majority of the block captains to include more uh, Commissioner Tony Stoddard. And seventy percent of the black captain said we would rather have a static display because it's later labor intensive, and those people that were responsible for being the black captains and providing food, they were tired. Uh, there were only a few opposing views to have a static display, but I think that this year, uh, for the first time in several years, the whole idea is to bring the community together at one central location. And in the past, it seemed like. Uh, former mayors and town managers that we spent five minutes in one location. We never had enough time to integrate with our members and attendants, and I think that missed the bill. My comment just would be simply: I, I think you know we're just getting back into it, and you know trying to gauge. We tried to gauge the interest and trying to gauge that. I think this was a good year for us to, to have as a, as a sort of a benchmark, and we can you know go from there and beyond. Yeah, but I, I think having you know inviting food trucks and inviting things like that would be a would definitely apply there. Well and, and the big department is trying to support the strategic plan, the strategic plan. And the theme of parks and recs is that that Bray Park has become a neutral site and, and a well attended site. We do Easter there, we do Halloween there. The department participates in both those during the uh the movie festival we all like radios. <laughs> so we want the as the master park or master Bray Park master plan moves forward. Great Park is going to be a centerpiece of the town. And I feel like uh, they supporting the other departments and the other departments supporting us. We feel like currently that that's the best option for National Night Out. Thank you, Brother. I bet. I bet. I bet. I bet. I bet. I bet. I Oh, yeah. I saw you mouth water. Okay, anybody, anything else? No closed statement. 
Do I hear something to get out of here? So I move, so move. Okay. All those in favor of adjourning say aye. Uh, we're done. Thank y'all for the good faith. Thank <laughs> you.